agenda as presented. Uh, I do have one agenda. Um, upcoming uh, is President's Day is going to conflict with our regular meeting time. Okay. Uh, so if we want to do anything about that, now would be a good time to talk about it if we're going to make any changes. Okay. Any other addition? Seeing none. Uh, yes? Okay. Yep. Um, so, three W Promotions website, four hundred twenty dollars and twenty eight cents. Alicia Cross Wiper Kit, one hundred and eighty seven dollars. Apex Software um, Sketching Software, two hundred fifteen dollars. Rosso Rosso Fuels for Town Garage and Town Storage, a total of six hundred seven dollars and twenty nine cents. For um, oil and fuel, Johnson Town Garage, Town Library, Town uh, Storage, total of $708.50 with $354.25 coming to the village. Uh, the Mill House, which is still Brasso Fields, by the way, Johnson Town Mill House, a total of $654.59 with half of that coming from the village. Uh, Johnson Town Diesel. Uh, $3,961.92 with $474.44 coming from the village. Uh, Johnson Town Garage, uh, $564.34. Historical Society, $733.01. And then the Town Storage, $730.71 with half of that coming from the village for a total of $10,000. $151.85. Central equipment of City of New York, maybe CNY, um, a nozzle valve clamp for winter parts and supplies at $127.44. Uh, Compass Minerals of America for coarse winter salt, three payments totaling $8,121.91. Fisher Auto Parts are connecting to the uh, connector tubing and plug, bulb wires, and fuel filter for $333.29. Han welding supply, um, looks like just general supplies, $12.18. Home maintenance service for the Historical Society, uh, $60. The municipal building, uh, miscellaneous services, totaling $825, with $275 of that coming from the village for a total of $885 payable to home maintenance service. Iroquois Manufacturing Shoot Cover, $620.24. What's that? By accident. Okay. Uh, Johnson Hardware and Rental, oh, it's wrong line, I gotcha. Johnson Hardware and Rental Hard Hats, for safety equipment, $671.96. Jason, you're saying it's more than hard hats there? Yeah, there's four hard hats and four retroreflective uh, class three coats on there for more else wagon. Thank you. Um, also for Johnson Hardware Rental uh, pump hose for $41.53. Um, that was returned, so there's also a negative there. Um, tube screws, nuts and bolts for fifteen seventy five. Adjusters and adapter, I'm oh, sorry, adapters and pipe eleven dollars and twenty ninety two cents. Screws, nuts and bolts seven sixty four for a total of seven hundred twenty five dollars ninety three cents to Johnson and Hardware. Lowell McLeod's for nuts, bolts, hardware instead of chains three thousand four hundred fifty dollars and seventeen cents. Sophia Barrard for steak and bake at the Woodfire Oven, $66.13. Staples Business Credit for supplies, um, $161.13. Stowe Road Auto Repair for valves and tech services. Sorry, nope. Just for valves, $227.73. Uh, telephone operating. For tax overpayment, three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and ninety-four cents. 
from our elevator inspection, annual inspection, $200 for 100 of that for each village. And Jasmine Harris for a skate and bake uh, for the wood fire oven, $43.25. Are there any questions? No. Board prepared to approve the meeting minutes on January 12th, 13th, 17th, and 24th. So moved. Motion, do we have a second? Motion and second, any discussion? In favor, signify by saying no. aye. Aye. Heather, now you vote. Aye. Vote. Vote nay. And motion carries. Rosemary, you the floor. I'll start with the example of what the first time we made. I have a few questions that I'd like to make sure. What color is it? Paper is black, black, and white. It's going to be white. It can be colored pieces. Do something so that people don't think it's just trash. Mm -hmm. yeah. any, any comments or concerns? Yeah. Exactly. Thanks for the edit. Yeah. Any other comments or concerns? And, um, we should have our ballots ready by Wednesday. I think Kohar usually gets the ballots. That was our spot today. So we should have the So we should have the So we should have the But this is one on white paper. And uh, I got a shipping notice that our county courts that are being sent to the town that are coming tomorrow. So I'm assuming county courts will be up to everybody this week. Which is yeah. the estimate. They will go up until 15th. Yeah. That's all of that. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Okay. Moving on. Another review plan of purchases. All right. So we have one plan of purchase. Uh, in excess of a thousand dollars, and you also have in the packet you've got a few quotes, and then we've got a couple additional ones uh, that came in. Well, one of them came in late, one of them uh, I already had, and just to make it here. Um, there's a range of prices for the trailer. Um, one of the kind of obvious and key differences is uh, you know kind of the weatherization and the treatment that the trailer has. Uh, you know our cheapest option being trailers that are, are not weatherized, not not they're not like like not likely to last as long as the other. Um, I believe Jason has a preferred model. Yeah, the galvanized one, I give you guys the quote last month or last meeting. That one is the cheapest still from the local Green Mountain Trailers in Morseville. Uh, out of all of them, except for the one that offers a, a e coating and a regular paint, they're, they're cheaper. But they said that they wouldn't hold up as good as the galvanized show because they offer galvanizing too. Uh, and their galvanizing is more than the Green Mountain Trailer quote. All these are galvanized. All the other quotes, there's five quotes, and uh, four of them are galvanized trailers. And the one is uh, galvanized and uh, e coating and a paint, regular painted trailer. Your recommendation is Green Mountain Trailers at 17,515. It is the cheapest galvanized trailer with. Yeah. With it being the better of the trailers, too, and he, he warranty isn't right there as far as for the year manufacturer inside of it, if anything goes wrong. More comments? Questions? So we talked about 
this in relation to whatever our surplus was to budget, right? So how long is this quote good for? The the one the Green Mountain trailer one was for uh, you know, the short time. He didn't know how it was going to be in the spring. He gave me another one I give Brian today that was I didn't print the copy of the yeah. alternate, but he had it. It was in last month's packet. It was eighteen thousand something. It was the ten percent more of what that right. it goes up to ten percent increments. They said they all said the same when it goes up to fire steel prices. About ten percent. That way we could keep moving. Make a motion we go with Green Mountain Trailers for seventeen thousand five hundred fifteen dollars. We have a motion to go with Green Mountain Trailers at seventeen thousand five hundred fifteen. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion is second. We have a discussion. Evan, did you hear that? I did. Okay. You have any uh, comments or? Concerns or questions? No. Okay. Anyone else? Once, once, twice. Okay. All those in favor, see by saying aye. 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 Those both. The ayes have it. Thank you. Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job with the estimates. I figured you might want two more. I figured I'd bring five to the table this way. There's a good array of you guys to see that. I'm going to do the same thing with the grader that I'm working on right now. There won't be five, but there'll be more than two. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. I guess we're into your report, Brian. Notification committee. You guys have a good match? Yep. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. All right. So uh, our first task uh, says here beautification committee speaking grants, and that was uh, a mistake on my part. It is actually the beautification committee wants to start offering small scale grants to uh, local individuals who are willing to undertake some kind of beautification project. So, in a, one of the additional handouts tonight is the grant applications process that they're proposing to go along with it. But it's small, up to $200. Uh, the qualifications for the grant is some that it has to be a beautification project that will have a, a public impact. So it's gotta be something that can be seen by members of the public. If you're gonna clean up your backyard, that's not likely to qualify, but if you're gonna do some planting and some cleanup on your front porch, Something like that might qualify for some assistance. Um, they would be administering the process themselves. Um, I know that they currently do have members of the committee who would be well qualified to assess uh, a project like this. So, I think that's worth considering. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, no, not much more. I, I sent an email two days ago about um, this. Our thought process and why we think it's a good idea. Um, that will um, help us continue to do the communication work that they're already doing, but we don't have so much to the power to do. <laughs> we have the budget for it. And this is actually something that I remember, gosh, eight years ago, the beautification committee, when it first started, um, I considered, but we didn't have the funding. <laughs> we didn't have um, certain things in place to make it happen. So it's actually been an idea we've been thinking about for a long time. But we finally feel like we're in a position to do it. And um, yeah, we just think that it would be a, a, a great good thing for everyone. If I can, I'll point out some of the challenges we have some of the projects that have been successful with the beautification committee, like the flowers on. Uh, the powerhouse bridge and the railroad street bridge uh, still require a lot of volunteers to go out and maintain them on a regular basis. Uh, that they're they're successful projects, but it's still uh, a lot of volunteer labor. This is still going to be volunteer labor, but it's kind of shifting that away from how it's administered. That nobody 
it's going there's no expectation that the town or anybody else is really going to provide any assistance or have any oversight on this other than you know the the, the grant agreement the grant process itself uh, but then it will be entirely up to the homeowner for maintenance and i think that's clear with this but it also gives us beautification activities happening onto private property uh, which can help spread this and make it more thorough than just a couple projects that we can do on, on public property. Kyle, this is also being funded by your surplus to the right? Correct. So we have about $1,600 left over. Um, so a thousand to go towards these grants. And then the rest could go towards um, purchasing uh, soil and plants and new planters for this for spring planting. Thank you. Yeah. And just to be clear, we in our application process here, we're we're trying to make it as easy as possible, so it's not a real, you know, overwhelming application. Um, and making it open to not just homeowners or business owners, but renters as well, because um, we know Broward Street is mostly renters, and but several, uh, I hope, <laughs> will want to, um, you know. Take care of that property and make it more beautiful as well for, for their own enjoyment and for, for the rest of the community. So you don't have to be in the owner. So the, uh, the thought here is that the committee will decide to get accepted. Um, yeah. What is the contingency if one of the committee members applies? Um, uh, we didn't talk about that. Process there, um, but I'll take advice on if that comes up. And, and the only other thing I yeah. brought up about uh, yeah. renters, um, there should be some process to make sure the landlord has buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, thank you. The only feedback I have is who can apply, like um, specifically, like the downtown district. I don't think they technically would have a downtown district, right? So, yeah, that's why we mentioned the street names. Right. So the other thing I would just say about the street names is that I think there are other side streets that could be disqualified, like um, Clark Avenue, um, the other side of Clark Avenue, on the other side of Cemetery, right now, right now, Gould Hill. Like, there's a bunch of little other side streets. So, um, Maybe even just saying and general area or in that vicinity or something like that effect that mm. makes that slightly more vague so it doesn't limit address address locations. Mm -hmm. um, just as a thought along that we do have our form based code does designate, you know, does create some of those boundaries. You could copy the same boundaries as the form based code as you think. If you wanted to have something that's a little easy to access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could even add a little map actually. Yeah. Just my ignorance, because I really just don't know. Is the beautification committee only about the village or is it about all of Johnson? Because if it is, I would argue there's some pretty ugly spots outside of the village. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not just about the village, although we do sort of, we have focused a lot of our projects in the village because it's where it's, you know, where things are most seen um, for the projects that we've done in the park and flowers and plantings and whatnot. I think we did talk about that. I think for this first round, since this is going to, if, if it gets approved, it's new to us. And also, I think we're going to limit this, the area just for now. If it goes well and we feel like we want to expand, then, then to expand maybe next year. Um, it's hard because we want to 
want to open it up to the greater town, but you also, you know, um, like Brian said, if you, you know, a lot of people live down more driveway. It, it, it's just hard to, you know, it just gets complicated with just in terms of this money used and then studies. It's a little complicated, but we did discuss it. We just felt like the downtown area should be the first start. Well, I just wanted to comment on the uh, question about the committee member applying. I, you know, I think it, there's an ethical um, dilemma if uh, it's not clear that any of our dollars from the committee is going to the product. And it's, we're talking about in somebody's yard, maybe that is a benefit to the person, but it's just kind of that fine gray area. So I think that maybe we have to be very careful about it. That's fair. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm, I don't know if you've seen, like everybody in the room hasn't seen this, but it does ask the question, are you able to buy the items up front and submit receipts for reimbursement, or would you like the committee to do the purchasing for you? Which does imply that you can't just go spend money however you want. Um, but I think you're quite about an ethical, like, um, granting money outside of a committee. The ethical thing to do would be not to allow committee members to apply. Yeah, and the, the piece about um, the fronting or the committee uh, purchasing the, the products for you um, is because we wouldn't want that to be the barrier for someone not being able to front money. So just to make it equitable, you know, for everybody. But, um, if that's a hardship, then we'd be willing to do you know, case by case, willing to do the, the purchasing <coughs> for that person. Yeah. I guess I'd look for what's the board's pleasure. Do you want to approve as presented or ask if some of the suggestions that were put out on the table from the notification committee has taken over staff? I think it should be tightened up. That's what I think. Is that the consensus? I think so too. I think that's updating the area and also the. I would like to say something about um, committee members being able to apply. I think that's an important piece. Well, let's do that now because um, we're looking at the timeline. Um, I'm guessing you're wanting to get this done with inviting it to the fiscal year. Yes. Spring's coming. People are making plans now. And these are some pretty easy edits to make. So how about, uh, well, I'll just throw it out there. Why don't you just go ahead? I'm, 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 I'm. Give me the opportunity. Uh, make a motion that we move this with the criteria that it's not open for beautification committee members to apply. And uh, there's a criteria for visibility. Um, that the, the beautification committee takes into consideration the visibility, the number of the amount of traffic that will will see uh, the project and its awarding of uh, the grants. Second, your motion is a second. Can you uh, your motion your uh, number of people that would view it? That's how you see it being determined where it is. That's one of the criteria to consider. Right, we, we put that pretty clearly in here. Yeah. One of the questions in the application is actually, how do you believe this project will be reviewed by the downtown Johnson and will it be easily seen and enjoyed by the community? So it's mostly there, but it's, well, yeah, it, but it's, it's, it's there. This is kind of saying it explicitly. It's not going to you know, be a traffic count or anything, but it's generally understood. Yeah, 
And, and even if we approve it, you can add more. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments? Uh, if I can offer a suggestion that gets at some of the things we've mentioned, and that who can apply says public or private entities are an individual properties physically located in the downtown district. Let's change district to area. This includes, and then add, but is not limited to. And then that list of roads. So okay. if uh, you're suggested a visible project on one of the side streets, you know, you can evaluate it based on its visibility criteria, mm -hmm. but you're not limited to, you know, if your address isn't on that road. Mm -hmm. But it still has to be evaluated based on that visibility criteria. So are people going to see this if we, we pay for it? I'll ask the motioner and second uh, to consider that friendly. Yes. Yes. Is that clear enough to call for a motion? Uh, I think Brian's thing is clear. How about the uh, making sure the landlord is given permission to have to be worried more about that or just say that one of the. With landowner permission. Yeah. Uh, I don't really go in here, but it, let's see. And it has a question on the grant application. Uh, you know, signature for the land owner. Uh, which might be the individual or might be that they have to go to their landowner. You know, it's like a line for approval of landowner. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I think some of those can uh, work out without us. Board prepared to vote. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so go ahead. What is the reasoning? That we wouldn't open this up to anybody that lives in the town of Johnson. We're taking town taxpayer money and excluding some of the town residents. And I thought we were supposed to embrace an inclusive community, so I would say that it should be town wide. Address that. Um, well, like I said before, we we did discuss that. Um that it was more very important to us that what folks do is has a high visibility factor, which is easier to achieve in the village. And because this is a new thing for us to take on, it would be also easier for us to sort of administer, I guess, having it, um, having it more village-based. Should it go well and we feel like we can do the more and there's a way of wording it in such a, you know, and making it work for the greater town, then we'll definitely consider that in the future. But for this first mm -hmm. round, we felt like downtown is what we could handle. Did you hear that, Evan? I did. That satisfy your question? Uh, I understand exposure and ease of administration, but excluding a subset of people just because it's easier doesn't seem to make sense to me, but we can vote. Any, anything else? I, I think this all comes down to visibility, doesn't it? Really. Uh, you know, if you met somebody up in the bucket brush, you may be in the town. Um, but still, you know, what, what good is that going to do for people passing through the village? You know? you know, maybe I'm on the wrong side of the issue here, but well, I, pardon me. Go ahead. I Sorry. think that uh, I think the intent is to spruce up what people see, the majority of people see. So I would support it. So 
That's what I'm saying. I do think that's the wrong side of the issue for some, but I don't think I am for the majority. If there's no further comments, we're going to do a vote. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. They'll do a roll call. Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Evan, how do you vote? Nay. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Matt, how do you vote? Aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tree board. Thank you, Grant. Tree board is also seeking grants at this time. Believe it or not. No, I don't think it's a Yep, that's fine. Uh, also tree board member and conservation commission member. Uh, Sue Lovering asked me to give a little update on a grant we're pursuing. Uh, pursuing this week, it's actually due Friday, so we'll be working on it. It's a Vermont watershed grant. Uh, the, the purpose of the grant is to protect, restore, and enhance lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams in the state. Uh, it's funded by half proceeds from the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department's conservation license plate funds. With help from the Department of Environmental Conservation, Fish and Wildlife distributes the funds to local and regional water related projects. Uh, so, what we're pursuing is a grant through this watershed grant for the Arboretum property and the stream bank along the Guyana River. The, what we'll be looking for is actually uh, uh, they have three tiers of grants, and this one is uh, an on the ground implementation grant for which the maximum is $10,000. And what we'd like to do with it is use it to control a bunch of the not weeded and faces along the brook and the, the stream bank itself, and then buy a whole bunch of plantings uh, to replant that riparian zone, try and build some flood resiliency and some uh, nutrient capture. So that's really the update uh, that we're going to be pursuing that. It's on Friday. Uh, we don't know exactly the, the price we're going to go for, but uh, we'll probably Ask for the full amount because trees are really expensive and we'll probably need some additional materials for weed protection, etc. Uh, that's the general use of that. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Lois. And there's no match in the town. No match. Right. Okay. Most important. That's the kind of stuff we like to hear. <laughs> we like it all already. Right. Yeah. Uh, but just to keep you really calm. I do have one other update, too, really quick. Uh, and that's that the tree board is also uh, still working on the shade tree preservation plan. I hope you're all familiar with what that is and why we're pursuing it. Uh, it's still in draft form. We're working with the Forest Parks and Recreation Representative, Joanne Garden. And we're really close to the final draft that we'll be sharing with you, uh, but probably not until uh, next month. Okay. The board's pleasure on that. Do we need to do anything other than just a consensus? And I think we really need to give authorization for you to apply. So, second. The motion is second. Any discussion? So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in the fully support. Of course, uh, my experience with not weed is that uh, it's tough. So, it's going to take more than a year to keep it after that. Uh, once you're like, Beyond planting, planting trees, getting rid of the planting trees. What's what you doing? Right. So the plan is herbicide application. We're going to hire uh, Red Star Consulting, who is the same uh, same person we used for the Journey's End project for the Conservation Commission to control the mountain there. So yeah. it involves whacking it down, letting it grow back, and the herbicide application, all of it to really knock it back. And actually, it's very effective with the professionally. So that's the hope. And then the Tree board and volunteers will keep it up as we were planning to anyway. So, this grant is just going to help us get some native vegetation established and try to keep up with these bases. How many times should I have to do that? Uh, the herbicide application yeah. at Journey's End, I think they did it twice or three times. Or, or twice. twice. The second time was uh, minimal compared to the right. first time. And it's, it's just it, what comes back. And is the same with your recreation path, they did it there as well. Is it gone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's worth the money. It's just so pretty uh, tenacious. Cool. How uh, competitive is this? Is our application? Uh, well, so there's seventy thousand dollars total available in the state. Uh, so parts and open is going to apply for what, where. Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that we'll get it just because it's it's right on the river. There's erosion happening there. It's invasive. There's a lot of different things coming together that meet the qualifications for 
grand sort of thing. Okay. Any comments, concerns, questions? Go get it. If not, those in favor of signifying saying aye. 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 Those aye. Then aye right, from Evan, those opposed, motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, fundraiser for sixth grade. All right, so the sixth grade class usually does some um, fundraising activities at town meetings. Uh, and we're not having an in person town meeting this year. So they have requested uh, being able to do some fundraising activities here at uh, uh, during vote. Uh, they are willing to set up outside, so we can set them up in a location where they wouldn't be impeding access to going uh, if you're following the requirements of any additional activities that we have at town meeting that somebody, if they so desired, somebody should be able to go vote and leave without ever being interrupted by anything other than voting. Uh, so we do have space that we can give them in the parking lot to set up and uh, conduct a fundraising activity. What about the lobby? The lobby <laughs> is it's a tight space. space. It might be tough to pass the. I, I'm not sure what their booth looks like at this time, so I can I can talk about that with them. It might be a little bit tough to pass the test of can somebody really go vote without being in people. Um, if they're set up in the lobby, because you'll have to pass through the lobby to get to the stairs to get up. I guess you can argue that if it's like a gauntlet, they'd have to go through before they move in. Yeah, and, and we can't create a situation like that, even if it is uh, something innocuous like a sixth grade class sponsor. So we, we, we have to be careful about what we put in the hallway. Uh, I just hope it's a decent day for them. I do too. Uh, but yeah, I think we do have a number of that we can support it. And they do realize that probably a lot of people will be voting absentee. Yeah, but this, uh, their feeling is that this is still probably the, a good opportunity for them okay. to conduct a fundraiser, even if it's less ideal than, than what happened on another year. What are they doing? Regret to say, I don't actually recall uh, what they were planning on setting it. Okay. They're doing a bottle drive all the time now. What'd you say, Beth? They're doing a bottle drive. No, they they were planning on on selling. They were planning on something. Bring your bottles. Bring your bottles. Yeah, they were they were talking about pizza, and I didn't think that was going to work out. I bring some bottles. I don't think they'd be able to keep it warm if they had to be outside. So I think that was. Not working out, but I, I don't recall specifically what they like. Okay. We all feel content just the consensus. Okay. That's it. All the system was setting up in a way that's compliant. Okay. The cannabis licenses. All right. So we have been provided some guidance. Uh, from the Cannabis Control Board uh, about what the structure and what the farm is going to look like for licensing. There is still a lot that isn't clear yet, and there's still a lot that is going to be, uh, that's yet to be determined, but this is the, the best source of rules that we, as we have them today. Uh, and with the licenses going up, uh, for application in, I believe it's April, uh, local businesses that want to apply for a license are asking for some clarification. So I wanted to provide an update to the board, kind of what the status was at this time. Um, and there's a couple decisions that we need to make about creating our own like local cannabis control commission. Sure, we got some. Yes, additional information for you. Always. <laughs> so, as Brian stated, the Cannabis Control Board has put together some guidance. Um, this guidance is actually still 
being processed by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The town planners are still trying to figure it all out because it's not necessarily in town planner language because the Cannabis Control Board are not planners and they're not necessarily municipal folks. Um, so there's still probably some to be sorted out. Um, we know that local use, um, cannabis use is, is significant, uh, so that's always a factor. Um, and really recommend that you move forward with a local board, a cannabis control board, which could be your select board, much like your alcohol um, liver board. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that you can issue licenses, but you can also suspend the licenses. Um, so you can create, as a cannabis control commission, you can create a uh, list of conditions that you can suspend licenses for, such as uh, using on site. And these are all in statute, but they shouldn't be happening. But if you have a business that, that is uh, stretching rules or vending them, uh, things like selling after hours, selling to youth. Um, you could also put into place some ordinances, such as nuisance ordinances, so if you do this happen to become a problem, um, then you would have a ground to stand on locally to be able to revoke that particular license. Um, and, uh, you know, other things that you might want to create is some just ordinances related to public spaces and use, um, and, you know, the, the jury's still out as to whether you can um, but in larger buffer zones from areas where youth are like parks. Um, the Cannabis Control Board has put in a 500 foot buffer zone from schools, which is not very much if you kind of map that out. Um, but you know, there's some discussion as to whether towns could, I know we don't want zoning, but maybe for an ordinance create, you know, extend like safe kid zones. Um, so that's stuff that the planning commission is following as closely as well. And I'm sure we'll be uh, happy to come to a future meeting and provide uh, guidance from that. But we would recommend um, that towns do move forward with creating a, a local cannabis control board. And then you have lots of resources. Um, Wyndham County put together one. There's a SIEMSA best practices. And then there's also um, just what we've got to in the Loyal Valley campus in our town. You would be on step four because the town's already voted, but it's whether to decide. Um, but it has a lot of data, local data on that. So um, I'll put those over on the table. What's the timeline? The timeline is they, they want us. I've heard different things about when they'll be able to start applying, but uh, or April is when they want to start issuing licenses. So we would we notify the state if we're interested in going ahead with our own board or commission. We'll we'll notify the state's cannabis control board if we're form, forming our own local cannabis control commission. Um, the exactly what we what controls we have over it are pretty unclear. Uh, I, I think that the guidance that the cannabis control board has put out really sounds like they are only one the local body to enforce zoning regulations, uh, which isn't really going to apply to us because we don't have any use based zoning requirements. Uh, but just to right that some of the other things are. You know, the law itself doesn't limit us in, in that same way. So are they within their authority to try and restrict us like that? Or is it going to run counter and to the, their statutory authority and they're going to get ranked in a little bit? So there's, there's more to be seen. But if we create a cannabis control commission, we kind of have to put in the door to deal with any changes that, that come uh, And again, I, I, I support, I think that so having the select board to handle that is good because we don't really know what the authority is going to be in the future. And the select board already has some relevant experience acting as a local uh, leader control. Now, a couple of questions I got is, if we didn't opt in now, can we later, if we opt in now, 
Could we decide to do away with the board if we opt in now with a select board as the board? Uh, can we later uh, you know, have a separate board appointed? I believe yes to all those, but the rules are not for any of those activities. So, you know, making any changes to this is it is not written yet. Uh, the rules are, are still being written. Uh, and they yeah, they, they are their timeline for issuing licenses is coming up very rapidly and they haven't really sussed out and provided a lot of detail on how that's going to happen. One of the, the one of the clear things is that if we have a local cannabis control commission, the first part of getting a license will be to go before the local board that the state won't issue any license. If there is a local board, the state won't issue any licenses until the local board uh, or the local commission reviews it. And approves it. The thing is that I've read through this, through that from what the uh, state board out, and basically it's saying you can't treat a cannabis establishment any differently than any other business. The only power that the local control board has is to issue and revoke licenses, period. And you can't have any rules or conditions around issuing those licenses that differ in any way from any other license you issue to any other business. Is that, is that, that is your a, understanding? That is, a, I believe, a correct reading of this document. There are challenges to whether that's a correct reading of the state statute. Okay. Uh, whether that is a the 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 cannabis control board is overseen and implementing the the state statute, and are they doing it completely correctly or not is unclear. Okay. Uh, but what the state control board is telling us right now is that the only thing we can enforce is local code. Right. And if we did have ordinance in place, we would have in place. It would have to be an ordinance that applied to any type of business, not specifically a cannabis business. Yes. So, so can I add some clarification here? Yeah. Um, let's say the conditions that local commission, local commissions can place on a license here limited to compliance with zoning bylaws and compliance with ordinances regulating science or public nuisance under 24 RSA 2291, as explained further in subsection B of this section four. Um, placing additional conditions on a local license or suspending or revoking licenses for any reason other than the allowable conditions is a violation of state law. So yeah, you would you could have some ordinances, but like the nuisance ordinance would potentially be for any business, um, adult industry within certain spaces related to parks or you know would be related to any adult industry business. So there are some ways that you could you could look at that. So. Uh, but planners are still debating this, um, what exactly means around the state. Okay. But that's a good point about the adult industry. It's very different than the cannabis industry. Right. But it's cannabis, these are cannabis retailers are 21 plus stores. They're, they're not, you know, you're not just going to add that to Sterling Market as a product. They're going to be adult stores. So they would fit into an adult industry. Um, and I think Weathersfield, Vermont, as an example of that, um, that they had like a, a smoke shop um, and they used the adult industry and moved it away from their schools. So, sorry for my ignorance, does that fall into the same category that any liquor store would fall into? I mean, I a liquor store is coming up as well. So, right. you know, so you, you would potentially have things that are already grandfathered in. Like, you know, you're not going to make sterling market food, but you have to, the rules, you can't, you can't create ordinances that would ban the industry fully from your community if your town has voted to help it. So you right. can make it so stringent that they, they had no place to go. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's completely asinine that the state is forcing to make a decision on this stuff before they've written the rules. But they are. 
So, um, and I know that, um, so part of my job at the university is to be a liaison to emergency services and the law enforcement with certain things. I would feel a lot better at least having in place a local staff so that there's someone local in the community to talk to if there's a good one so we learn as who has authority to do what and under what circumstances is going to get hashed out of all those drug court cases or the whole thing. It'll take a couple of years to all get hashed out eventually. But at least knowing that it's in place and that there is a local licensing authority, I think it's better to start from that place, and, you know, as a, at least as a beachhead, <laughs> and then see how it goes. You know, it may end up being that it makes more sense to step back. I really would like to, to see the town establish a local control. Um, um, Evan, do you have anything you want to add? Not that I can think of. Um, as somebody alluded to, the voters did vote to opt in, so this is beyond our control. Our control only is whether we have a commission or not. That, that's the only decision really, that we have to make right now. The whole thing is going to be a pain in the rear end. And I, I don't think that we're going to get a fair share of the revenue generated by it. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we need to complain about that. Everybody needs to $100. Yeah. Five. It's always easier for a lot of small people. It's a sports pleasure. Yeah, uh, I hope you set up a cannabis control commission for Johnson. I think initially. But it start with the select board. And we have a motion to set the commission up. Second. And the second. Any further discussion? I'd just like to say, I, you know, I, I actually do think it'd be a good idea. Well, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not for it to be the select board or not. But if there are people that are interested in serving on the I mean, part of it is really contingent on if there are people that are interested in serving on the campus control commission. So if there are, I think folks should. Uh, Let's comment. No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You guys have it? Congratulations. Those select board. Uh white trails. All right. So uh next up uh, bike trails on town property update. So we've been talking about getting bike trails work together on the uh, yeah. 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 thank you. Multi-use trails and I think I corrected that in this statement but not on the heading. But yeah uh, multi-use trails on uh, the old council property. Uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few acres up there. There are some trails that the Snowmobile Club currently uses. Uh, we've expanded the trails that are already there uh, out to you know, fit multiple uses, could be a good uh, recreation hub, uh, as identified in a couple of uh, finding documents that we've had over the years. Um, we have made, have made some progress on that recently, uh, and it Kind of petered out a little bit. There was a lot of discussion about what we might need to do for Act 250. Uh, we've got some folks that are interested and are working on it again, and they've reached that step again. And, and we are confident that we will need an Act 250 amendment uh, because the land is already under Act 250 jurisdiction. Uh, so we want to continue along those lines and make the application process. Um, this is one step along, will be a, a, a plan to be adopted in the future, but uh, yeah, and the next step along is we think is actually good. Okay. And have you run this through the trustees yet? 
Yeah, okay. Okay. So what you're looking for tonight is uh, just this go ahead. to file an amendment. So we could find out if we can, shouldn't even bother trying to plan and learn about you know, what and who uses it and all that. It, it doesn't make sense to have all those meetings at the end when I'm really doing them. Okay. But board's thoughts. I think this should probably be brought up at a joint meeting because I know. Uh, I mean, logging on property and on projects and priorities for the previous board. I don't think we. So we both will have to approve it, Kevin. Uh, we can approve it contingent upon village trustees' approval. They'll they'll go and make the presentation to the trustees as well. Wouldn't it be easier for all in the same room and to discuss it? I can't hear. Wouldn't it be easier for all in the same room to discuss it? Well, uh, we we usually don't meet that often, and something like this could be done separately. I I believe. I think so too. I think we should just do it, and it's not going to hurt anything to file, but just see what happens with the amendment. And the amendment would just be for turning the snowmobile trail into a multi-use trail? No, no. It'd be, there currently is a snowmobile trail there. It would be looking at some of the rest of the property, making it multi-use. And it, the plan probably would include the snowmobile trail also. But right. Yeah. We're not asking for approval on a specific plan on what the exact trail network is going to look like is are going to that could be and finding out would they approve some will they consider approving something like this in the future and if not we're not going to develop a plan uh, we'll just stop there but if a motion they, to file active 50 amendment um with the intention of finding out whether it's worth looking into a further plan or not motion we have a second an Act 250 amendment or an Act 250 amendment on the first. Good question. Thank you. Uh, second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all the way. Oh, sorry. I would ask that it would also be included for multi use, also include HP. Was it restricted in the multi use? Currently, it's just. We're just saying, or can we do anything? We want to know, we want to file Act 250 now. We can do any type of trails development. Okay. And, and the goal would be, I mean, I mean, this is like way down the line. The goal would be all communities like APD, snowmobiles, hikers, bikers, skiers, hunters, like, you know, but that's, we don't even know if we can do anything until we file the Act 250 amendment. Okay. And the word is multi use. Multi-use. Okay. I'm here representing the Conservation Commission. And I have a concern because this is the first we've heard about this. And I think if we're talking about a community project, the community should be involved. And as we look out for the resources that are up there, without being a part of all this, these discussions, I don't know who we is. I think it's just not enough. It's a it's a pick up Lois on the project that Walter has been working on that we met with you guys at the library a couple of years ago about it and just want to discuss that we would have you guys help us manage the plan in the future if we ever got past the step of getting an extra 50. <laughs> I just think that this kind of project should be the groups working together. It would certainly be a lot more beneficial for everybody. Um, I'm sensing that the intent was everyone will, but they're just trying to find out if there's any sense that you can even meet and talk about it. Who's the week? Who's, who's already meeting? Yeah, there was a meeting that's going on. Uh, Somebody from the Conservation Commission could sit in on it, perhaps. 
Right. Well, currently, it's just a proposal brought by our rec coordinator. Okay. So it's not legal. Right. No, it's not. Is, it, it is. Like, Brian? Is the we Lisa and Brian? Uh, I've been involved in some of the conversations. Lisa has. I think Walter met with you a time or two. We met one time and it was posted publicly yeah. that we were meeting and there were like four people came together and said, aren't you know, Walter, could you fill us in on what happened? He said we got to the point after meeting with all the different people around town that without yeah. activity, there's no sense to keep meeting because we don't know if we can actually do anything out there or not. I don't think there's any intention to pull a wool over anybody's eyes. I think it's just trying to get the process going. There's going to be all kinds of meetings and everything else down the road if this does get some traction. So I don't think anybody's going to be in the dark down the road on this. So for my clarification, is it the recreation committee that's taking a leadership on this project? To find out if we can even do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know, communication is a huge problem. And if I know it's the recreation committee, I can continue to look at their minutes to see what if something's going on that might be <coughs> helpful to some of our members. Mm -hmm. so we might be I'm going to reiterate reiterate this. I don't think anything sinister is going on at all. Yep. I don't. I think just somebody's trying to look into something and see. If anything can go any further, and if it can, it'll be dropped. Like, I don't think it's sinister. I'm trying to be helpful, saying that there's a group of people who care about the natural resources that would be willing to help if we knew something was transpiring. That's why we have agendas and minutes and follow us. Well, I, I don't think, you know, I'm going to say it again, I don't think anything. Underhanded is going on. So. so, you have motion and second on the floor. Is there any more discussion? None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Evan, vote. Evan, did you vote? Aye. Okay. You always have it. You said. Class four road policy. All right. So up next, we've got a review and discussion on the class four road policy uh, updates that were provided by the planning commission. Uh, I think we've got a couple members of the planning commission here to help us with um, The policy that they use drafted and provided to us is uh, a really great update and address a lot of the concerns that we had about the uh, last draft that we saw. Uh, so I'm starting on the document that reads Town of Johnson, Vermont, policy regarding class four highways and trails. Um, so I want to Kind of run through this policy. The general assumption of this is this policy is uh, pretty much okay. So I want to run through it relatively quickly and, and point out a couple of the changes that I suggest that we consider making uh, before adopting it. There's more discussion, more than you want to do afterwards. That, that's fine. But I'm going to start with kind of my changes to the document as we go. So the first thing I'd like to do uh, underneath the basis for establishment of policy, uh, the last sentence in the first paragraph reads, therefore all maintenance costs are borne by the local property tax. Uh, to be fair to landowners that do provide a significant amount of their own maintenance on class four roads. I'm sorry, Brian, where are you? Yeah, it's a basic for establishment of policy, that very first paragraph oh, last okay. sentence. I got it. You got it. First paragraph on that. I got it. Thank you. Uh, it currently reads, therefore, all public maintenance, or excuse me, therefore, all maintenance costs are borne by the local property tax. Uh, in recognition of uh, property owners 
that are providing sometimes a significant amount of maintenance at their own expense. Um, I'd like to change, I'd like to add the word public to that, that reads, therefore, all public maintenance costs are borne by property tax. Okay. Next. Uh, still in the same section, the third paragraph at the top of the second page. So it reads, uh, of maintenance in parentheses. I'd like to locate the whole sentence. Sentence reads, the statute requires towns to provide maintenance to bridges of culverts and class four highways. Those statutes do not specifically require or identify any specific level of maintenance and no maintenance at all on legal trails. I would like to add to that, uh, after the of maintenance, close parentheses, I'd like to add answer repair gully erosion on hydrologically connected road segments, comma. Then continue with and no maintenance at all on legal trails. Uh, it is not part of the six statutes on class four roads, but uh, the six statutes on the municipal road general permit do add that requirement to our maintenance of class four zones. All right. Uh, the no, uh, that was my commentary. Uh, the, the part that I want to add is uh, see, it reads, it's the last sentence on paragraph three of basis of establishment of policy. Uh, right after it says, of maintenance, of maintenance, close parentheses, I want to add and to repair gully erosion of hydrologically connected road segments. Come. So that's inside the package. After the repair. After the repair. Yes. Uh, then the next change I have is uh, and next page. I have three town policy. In the second paragraph, uh, it refers to the road for person. Uh, we're generally titling that uh, as a public works supervisor. So I'd like to change that from road for person to public works supervisor. And those are the extent of the Definite changes I, I, I want to make. I've got a couple talking, a couple things to talk through, uh, but those are the, the specific changes that I want to make. I do want to, when I'm talking about discussion items, I want to start here on uh, the bullet point three, the same paragraph. Um, bullet point three, hold on. Town policy? Yeah. Same paragraph that I made the change to. That's uh, the one of the far right terms. The fourth person. Yeah, but it's a whole package. Where's bullet point three? Right. It's on the third page. On the third page, it says three town policies. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know that I want to, I would recommend making that part of our policy that we're going to check all of the roads, all the class four roads every year. Um, I think that's a good goal and that we can, I, I'd like to start by making it a point of order for our uh, public work supervisor to get out and assess the class four roads more often than we currently do. Um, but I don't know that I would recommends that, putting that in, into policy. I think we should say regularly instead of annually. 
I think regularly would be good. Um, yeah, I think it would be a, 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 a good compromise. And, <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Understood. The other thing on the on the background data, yeah, like that's good data. Um, I feel like it should be like an amendment or something, though, because it's not like it's point in time data that helps influence the policy, but it's not about the policy itself. You know what I mean? Sure. I feel like that could be an uh, an addendum or something to the policy. Uh, but I feel like it doesn't belong in the policy per se. The miles are good in the policy; those probably yeah. won't change unless we make a change too. That's my early. I do have to make it. I do have to check to make sure that these are still accurate. Actually, I know they're not accurate because we have, at the very least, changed mine. So maybe that whole background data section should just be. They can just come out and they can be. It you know, should be referenced because anytime we look at the policy, like we should be, be able to reference back what was used the last time the policy was maintained. Okay. Um, but not, you know, you get my point. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. The next section I want to bring it up under I have four maintenance by the town. Uh, section B2. So it's on the next page. Uh, it starts with snow plowing. So it's parts with the two, the snow plowing, snow removal by any usual means. Does uh, everybody follow the paragraph? Mm -hmm. On that paragraph, I think that's all pretty reasonable. Uh, I will note that it differs from the model policy by VLCT, uh, which does, in the model policy, it does require a permit to be obtained in order to plow snow on class four roads. I don't think there's any problem with us not obtaining a permit with the exception that this designates uh, to any damage done to the road, bridges, culverts, et cetera, is the responsibility of the snowplow operator. If we don't issue a permit, how do we know who the snowplow operator is? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it may just be a logistical problem with us determining that, but presumably, Somebody on the road will tell us who's been plowing the road if we do have to go back and find out, but that's it. We got into a little bit of a problem when we were trying to decide on issuing uh, permits or not, who was plowing and other different people were plowing the same road at different times. Yeah, and I, I think that's why the planning commission recommended this language where we're just yeah. hands off. But if we're hands off with this, and we do have to find the responsible party, uh, that might be difficult. Does anybody have a permit now? Does anybody have a permit now? No. So we don't have either. No, we don't. Uh, that, that's why we need to update the, the, one of the reasons we need to update this is there was a lot of confusion about that. I'm really not for permitting, permitting, like, does the benefit of the overhead outweigh the lot, the potential loss over time? I can't see yeah. that argument. Yeah, I'm not recommending that we, you know, we go to, to issuing permits on this. And I, I think that it would be, I think that the permits themselves, as we've seen, would be difficult to enforce and, you know, we have a pretty good idea of who's calling each of the roads now. Uh, okay. So you just wanted to point that out? Or uh, yeah, that's really, I wanted to point out what the potential problem was. That okay. if the, the, this differs from the model policy, and there's a good reason why it differs from the model policy. There's a potential problem with that difference, but as long as we're aware of it, I think it's fine to accept that. Uh, I think we had a couple of comments from members of the public. One, one question. How is damage to roads, bridges, or culverts in a non-snow plowing situation handled now? Uh, 
on, on class four roads, being yeah. able to any road. Any road. Or any road. Any road. I mean, because I can imagine, is this, are, in other words, are we holding snowplow operators to a higher standard in terms of damage they might cause to, than we are anybody else? No, damage to any road, we'll, we'll do our best to investigate and find out what caused the damage or who caused the damage. Uh, it generally has not been difficult for us to work that out and work with the offending party to restore the road. Um, we've had to do that with uh, sugar operations uh, a few times that I can think of and uh, farming operations. But we have not had a problem. Oh, it's no problem. Uh, I, I can't think of a time where we've had a problem with this one. Um, that's not to say that it could happen, but I, I do not recall a time where we had to work that up with a snowball operator. Uh, but in those cases, we didn't have anybody there to witness it, but we were able to talk to neighbors and, and other folks and, and learn who was responsible for it, track them down, and work with them about making repairs. Yeah. Why wouldn't we phrase it as damage to snow plowing as we handle it in the other damage? I have an answer for that because yeah. for any other type of maintenance you require, but for snow plowing, we don't. That's the proposal in this language is other maintenance would require a permit. Um, damage by I'm thinking of a sugaring operation in particular. Uh, they were using the road uh, and they continued to drive on it at a time when the road really was too loose and they shouldn't have been on the road at that time. Yeah. So, sort of. Yeah, I think mean, you remember that. <laughs> we're trying to make it easier for homeowners to, to plow the road without having to go get a permit. Right. But we still need to. Because we don't require, well, even if we did require, it, would, but yes. <laughs> no, we did when we did require. Okay. But we're stipulating that just because you don't need a permit, you still need to be responsible for the work you're doing. Sure. <coughs> this is true of everyone that lives on class four right? Yes, except for other types of maintenance they would do. Right. So. Uh, next page. To the best of my knowledge, anybody working on a road, they're, they've been uh, avoiding getting permits. It's the snow plows. We we stopped trying to enforce permits. Yeah, a, a few years ago we we granted kind of the, a modification of the policy that we were not going to be seeking permits from snow plow operators, and so we are in the process of trying to update the relevant uh, ordinances. So, or, excuse me, policies. So that that's reflective of the reality that we're not collecting it from. Uh, and we do regularly get permits from people that want to do work on the class four. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it seems to me if you're not seeking permits, you're not seeking permits from the class four roads as often as even once a year, there's a high possibility that there are people doing work without getting permits and you wouldn't even know, right? I mean, yes. that the reality of the situation is, is yes, we you know we have to do a better job of oversight of our class four roads. They're a public resource. And yeah. Well, to some degree, we just don't have the capacity to send somebody out of the class on every mile of the class four road. It, it has not been a priority for us that, that we've chosen to spend our resources on other things. Um, and, we, and we want to improve them. I think the planning commission should start with respect to the earlier estimate by changing annually, regularly. Our concern is just that. 
you don't have to read verses. If it's not a prayer, if it's not a prayer, it doesn't happen. And it needs to happen. They are resources. They do need to be, at the very least, effective. If we can't afford to fix them, at least we have a list of things we need to prioritize. And we think how we take the test of that will change and say we put annually in there specifically for you. The other side of the annual thing is that this hydrologically connected status changes all the time. That was important to us if you see that. Well, this year it's in line, the next year is not fine. So there's a group that's another reason for the annual review of the question. Uh, I have to agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I think that annually is a good board. A, a good consensus want to leave annually in there. I, I think all the points that are being made are excellent. Yeah. And I think that I would want to know how many hours it's going to take to, to do that every single summer. Without having, I, I don't think it's a, a terrible project. I think it's or a, a terrible if it only gets too so many hours. But I, I don't know how many it's going to be. What is our class for miles at now? This is old data. It's been a while. Well, that's it. That's here. Well, that's changed. Okay. Uh, it actually should have gone up a little bit. The road uh, was changed to a class four. Okay, no more than fifteen. No, yeah, the public works supervisor doing this is salary anyway. It's not like it's an hourly wage. So I, I think we can do it. Any big deal? It's no big deal. Yeah, it's not a. a it's not a hill I want to die on about whether it's annually or regularly. No, yeah. Leave it in there. Uh, let's see, I pointed out, comment there. I want to point out comment, sorry, section number nine, uh, disputed right of way situation. Uh, planning Commission took our feedback on this, uh, and it was. Uh, this is a, a good improvement from the original proposal. Um, but I don't know that this is, that this is necessary in, in the policy. The, the standard for defining the right of way is that the town's right of way exists from the center of the road. But we gave them feedback. So now we're saying to take the feedback out that we gave them. So the feedback we take gave them, we being another board, was to take it out. And they came back with a couple of weeks. So yeah. the feedback was we had a written now it's not a meeting. Such a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And he picked that back and said, now look at this is a town of maps and bread. This is very important to do some citizen goals, part of I, I, I think it's a compromise. I just I don't well, know it's necessary, but this, this if we're going to the dispute. <laughs> so, so like, well, in well, other statutes, in other six statutes, our right of way is defined. You know, we have our right of way. It is defined as being from the center of the road. Um, yeah, but the dispute is where is the center of the road? For instance, my road, there was a dispute of where is the road? Not how wide, you know, we know how wide it is from the center, but I mean, a lot of it, but where is the center? There's a dispute. The center the can center. change over time. Yeah, the center can change. Now, sorry, I think, I, I think 
from the previous conversation that we had, not yeah. only a strong position on this personally, but from the previous conversation we have, the answer was, I think, if I can, I hate to put Doug's name in it because he can't represent himself, but I think Doug's point was, and maybe the point you're making is, it's defined in state statute already. So if we change the language in our policy or our ordinance, then we're, we're establishing a different standard than that, which is already in state statute and that we might not want to do that. I think that was the, the reason. Yes. Um, and this is pretty close to, this defines a process that I don't think this is really giving up anything. I think that it does define a process for how we would handle a dispute with a, a landowner. I don't think we're giving up anything with this, but I don't think that it's necessary because those the powers that we're asserting here are already granted to us by other sections. But as a method for dealing with a dispute, this is a fine. You know, the, does the statute talk about the method for dealing with the dispute? It does not. So I think for that reason we should keep this here. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any big deal keeping it in here. I don't see it's, it's gonna cause a problem with any state statute. State statute doesn't even address it. For crying out loud, what's the big deal? It, it doesn't. State statute addresses are right away, but it does not address the, how to handle this dispute. Right, and it's a perfectly reasonable way to handle this dispute. Yeah. I'm curious about how work done by the within the town right of way, permitted or not, overlaps onto private property. How that kind of a uh, infringement could or should be addressed. An example I can give is people who are doing work at the end of our, or they're, they're the loggers at the end of our road, yep. have gone down the road and created large drainage places. Um, you know, they've bulldozed trees down and they've scraped up soil. And they cut down trees wantonly, you know, four feet off the ground, just whack them off, all up and down within the town right away. Within the right of way, and also beyond the right of way onto our private property. It seems like that kind of misuse of the town right of way, leaving it in bad repair, maybe needs to be addressed either under section six or nine. Or and just as a landowner, I'd be curious about when the their work on a public right of way extends into damage to my property. Any permit that somebody obtains to work in the right of way does not confer any ability to work on your private property. It only grants them the power to work inside our right of way. So they would, you know, you would have to pursue that with them, but you would be within your rights. Uh, I don't know exactly what you would do, but you would you would be within your rights to work against them uh, and to pursue remedy directly against them if they're encroaching on your private property outside of the right of way. Our permits do not cover anything outside the right of way. Uh, and if you believe that they're violating the permits, if they're impacting stormwater, if they're impacting the flow of water, uh, it's kind of the, the standard that we have for what a what you should be doing with a uh, what you should be doing within the right of way should not impact uh, the flow of stormwater or or water off the ground. That it should. It might temporarily, but you should be restoring it to its prior condition of the person. Uh, and if you believe that they're in violation, we, we'd like to know about it. Maybe that should be added to the every once a year thing that the public works foreman does. Maybe something could be added about the appropriate recourse for um, uh, yeah. yeah. Like if you're aware of damage, because I mean, I won't waste all your time here tonight, but I could just go on and on about the 22 years worth of damage just on my road. And the town doesn't care. 
you know, and there hasn't been an advertised method of recourse. And the road's not being inspected, it's not being repaired. If people are getting permits, I can't see that they're being held accountable. And there was all this erosion work done with all the state money down lower on the road, you know, creating those big culverts. And then up on the class four portion of the road, the, 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 a private person did such erosive damage that, you know, we noticed increased sedimentation in our pond. And I mean, who, who cares? I mean, and how do I, what do I do about it? Were they offering another opinion? I don't know. I, I, I can't. I can't answer that. With, I don't have any of that information. I, I, I mean, what typically you or or Jason or or a former highway corner would have issued a permit. Yes. We don't typically issue permits at this level. Um, but I mean, we we have no authority beyond our right away. And if they, if somebody does something outside of our right away, that's between you and who that person is. Uh, we're not involved in that. Yeah. Right. Well, the primary erosion was caused by work done within the town right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have before on logging operations uh, who did abuse it, and people would come to us and tell us what's going on, and we would require deposits and such that before they got their money back, they'd have to return the road back to its prior condition. And that was on class two highways. Right. So, so am I missing that in this policy, or is there could be? I mean, that's a practice you do now. Um, yeah, the, 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 that's all just kind of covered under six, the permission. It's kind of covered under six and an additional policy for, uh, I think it's titled the work in the right of way. It's um, a policy. Number one, so. Yeah. Yeah. Number one. I think it might be a policy, not the work. But, okay. uh, but yeah, the work in the right of way, the, the policy. Requirements to get a permit if you're going to do any work in the right of way on any road. Um, and we had, we're trying to fix some of the holes and some of the conflicts that they had with the class four road policy. The chief one being the thing was brought up earlier about we we're technically saying that we were going to require policy anytime you were in the road. And that in practice wasn't what we were doing. And was not really something we wanted to rise to that level of pulling a permit and checking every single project that we want regular maintenance, like filing and things really should, shouldn't require that much administrative work. Um, so speaking of the right-of-way ordinance that you mentioned, Brian, yeah. there's number seven is right-of-way access. Uh, so work in the right-of-way, should that just be referenced here and all that other Ready? See where I'm going with this? Yes. I don't know if it's appropriate or not. I don't know the ordinance off the top of my head. Uh, I can't quote it well enough to. But my point just being like, should we just reference it here and not yeah. have additional text? No, I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, there's a fee for a road, right? There is. So that fee should cover the road foreman. Issuing the permit and inspecting it afterwards because when I obtained the first permit to work on Todd Hall, we got Brian Krause and the public work. He went up with us before we did it, he works, told us what we should and shouldn't do. And he also went back up after the work was complete. Well, that should be a common practice because any permit you get anywhere, the state, anything, town, usually should be okay. So that's me. That, that is our, our pain for it. Yeah, and that is our practice for all of all the permits. Did not know that it was a big tool with them and in sign paper never went look. Yeah, for their process. We're we're making some fixes yeah. to that. Did I ask for you? You know, you referred to this right of way. I've lost the word. Right of way, working the right of way policy. 
And I read that and I looked for it and I can't find this right away, working right away. Where is it? I have the access. Well, I think it's just put your right there. The right of access permit policy. <laughs> Is that what you're referring to? Right. I believe so, but I have to. Uh, yeah, the family and right of access permit process is fine, but then apparently somewhere in Johnson has its own policy that is virtually working right away. And it's a fine. The one we have pertains to the town, whether you're working on class four or any of our libraries. It's under four, it says C. You see the town's working on right of way policy. Okay. Where do I see the town's right of way policy? I'll put it on the website. If it's not on the website, we will address that. But let me see here. I realize you're in the process of rebuilding the website. Okay. Yeah. It looks like the one that I'm finding on the website is older. So we just redid that a few years ago. Yeah, we did that pretty recently. Yeah, the one that I see on the website looks like the older one, <laughs> which, if you're interested, is under documents. But the old one references even older policies from 1995. Yeah, we have we have an updated one. Uh, I don't know if it. We have a, an updated one. We'll get that up on the website. But if you're interested in looking, it is called on the website the right of way access permit policy. Uh, it is out of date and will be replaced. I think it's worthwhile for us to pull that policy again and look at the section to see to make sure that they're capacity. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Brian? Any other changes? Uh, the section number 10 for penalties. Um, I'm not sure that penalties like that. I'm not sure the penalties like that are, are appropriate for a policy and not an ordinance. If we're talking about financial penalties that we can levy. It's probably right because we need to have an ordinance. We're going to issue a fine or any penalties. That's the same policy. Yeah, well, policies can be changed at the whim of the board, but an ordinance is a formal process and the voters can petition and require to have all those, all those sort of things. But um, policy typically guidance, guidance um, whereas an ordinance is law. Yeah. And, and a little bit more distinct or maybe less distinct in terms of policy is a clarification of how we are using our granted authority. A ordinance is, uh, is a definition of our authority. And if it has penalties associated with it, are we asserting that we have a, an authority that isn't inherent. So before we you know get too deep into this, can you find out from the league? I, I can ask the league about whether that's appropriate or not. Uh, they didn't have a penalty section in the model policy. 
Yeah, you behind that, obviously, you're just trying to provide some heat. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I think, like I said, I, I, have, I greatly appreciate the updated policy. I think you addressed a lot of the, the concerns that we had previously, and the planning commission did a great job with this. That's it. Oh, may I add one more? Yeah. Um, that, there's a, a factual error here where it says, according to state statute, you can't just maintain the culverts and drainages. And I'm trying to see where it is now so I can direct you to it, and I can't find it myself. Um, yeah, currently, that's uh, state statute for town's obligations to class four highways, bridges and call. A lot of people mm -hmm. under the change in classification. Oh, yeah, statute required towns to provide maintenance to bridges and call on class four. But the last line on that thing. The statutes don't require towns to provide maintenance for bridges and culverts. All that they say is the thing that's quoted later on in this document about it's like the town can decide. And that's from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They're the ones who said it's a common world myth that the state statute interpretation is to provide maintenance on bridges and culverts only. And that's it's not true. You're, you can set that as your policy at the town level, but the state statute is that you, as a town, must maintain them to the degree that you see necessary. And then it's up to you to decide what's necessary. But the Vermont League of Cities and Towns lawyer says that it's a common rural myth about this bridges and culverts clause. That's why I always understood it. If you want to check with them on that, do it. We can. Uh, it might come from Diane Flynn. It's maintained to our standard. Uh, if you recall, the state requires us to pass a road and bridge standard. Uh, so that might be where they get us, is that the state has to approve our road and bridge standards in order for us to receive state funds for maintaining them to that standard. Uh, and that might be a requirement that they make us put in our our standards document uh, in order to receive state funds. We don't get state funds for class four roads. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I'm. You guys are free to yeah. make that your rules if you like. But I'm just saying, saying that the state statute requires that guidance it is false. Follow up yeah, on I, think, I, I think that where Mayor is digging into. That's uh. the court case where it's one that we can establish that state of the common form. You can you can say there that for sure. There's a court case. But a legal precedent is different than a state statute. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We may need some guidance there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's your presenting it. There's a few things that we've got questions on. Yeah. Is there anything further the board would like to do with this? I have one question, which is on point five on control and protection. Mm -hmm. um, and that is. Do we have established even for all class four roads currently? No. Okay. Are you addressing the town roads list at this time too, or accepting comment on that? Yeah, we'll accept comment on that. I can't speak to all the roads on here. I don't have experience with them, but Prospect Rock Road changed the legal trail at last driveway, discontinued portion on state property. Um, 
does not make sense in any way whatsoever. You know, I just have so many questions here. I mean, last driveway on the entire road is the end of the road. Last driveway at the end of the class three road, if you were to end it there, there's no place for people to park. You know, and this can be a portion on state property that makes sense because it's a staggered thing. And our property is on one side of the road, state property is on the other side of the road. You know, so does it start? Is it going to be discontinued when it meets the state on one side of the road, or when it's on the state on both sides of the road? You know, that that doesn't make sense. The whole prospect rock designation change, especially when you look back historically. That road used to be a class three road all the way to the end. And I understand that to have it revert back to being a class three road, the homeowners want an have to petition. But it just to me is a, a scary indicator of once you stop maintaining it, once you degrade it in terms of designation, there's no going back. And if 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 it's already gone from a class three to a class four, and now you're saying move it from a class four to a trail. It's just, it's it's not reasonable for the amount of usage that that road gets. Yeah. And to have a one size fits all solution, that that's going to change to a legal trail, same as um, Lamb Road. Lamb Road is a driveway, glorified driveway. Okay. Up to your driveway. So this is this list of the Well, that's reassuring. <laughs> that is so reassuring <laughs> because because I couldn't believe it. Oh, no. I, I apologize. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is is evidently not the most current list. Um, and this is only recommendations, anyway. right? Yeah. Right. A, but I think, it's, uh, generally speaking, I would first. Um, Support a movement toward upgrading to class three whenever possible versus downgrading the trail. Both are money saving things, but they accomplish different goals. If you upgrade to class three, you get money from the state now. If you downgrade to a trail, you don't. And you also don't have any responsibility. But right now, you're not taking responsibility for the class four roads anyway. So why not upgrade them a little bit and get money from the state and make it usable? Charlie? Sorry, my latest, which is not a time. My latest uh, proposal was to keep Prospect Road as a class four because it's a great tourist attraction. And to improve, there's a section of uh, Prospect Rock Road, I believe it has to do with that the neighbor's driveway, that's a much pick for a couple of weeks every year. And we Walk that way to talk to your neighbors and concluded that that section probably should be upgraded to class three at the top. So, yeah, we want to return. Our recommendation is to return to class three if the board wants to spend money. They could use the ARPA money to upgrade that section. We didn't need ARPA. Yes. I, please. Yeah, please go ahead. I, how, many, how many other changes off the top of your head is there from this? Uh, uh, there's probably quite a few. Okay. Yeah, there's four rounds that we looked at. We will look at it out. We can continue to have that. We will only class for those that have active active segments and you know it's specifically one of those segments. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't my planning on this wasn't really to get into the specific roads tonight. Uh, my only comment on the roads is uh LCPC did receive some additional funding as a follow-up. For the rotor of an inventory they did to make some improvements to the class four roads that were part of that report. 
based on our request that we wanted them to do more site inspections on class four roads. They got some additional funding to do that. So I'll be going out uh, in the spring with uh, Rob Moore and we just asked uh, the former foreman, um, uh, Steve, Smith. Steve Smith, thank you. Uh, based on some of his historic knowledge to, to accept it. And we'd be happy to take planning commission or, or you know, let anybody else know who, who you know, you know this paper interested when we're up on that road, we can inform that as well. I don't know that we're specifically going to do prospect rock. I know where focus is going to be on the road. So, uh, they had difficulty. They had questions about, you know, some of the, the historic roads uh, that they, LCPC's inspectors couldn't always find the road. So, uh, those are our, our targets. All right. Mike. Anything further on that's why with questions, discussions? Evan, you got anything? Are you awake? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I was going to ask about the list. I'm glad that kind of got brought up at the end because that list that's there is nothing that was in the Planning Commission's report on October 18th, but Sounds like Paul's going to work on that and get it to us. Yep. Yeah, no, that, that's entirely my fault. I, I must have pulled that from an earlier exchange that we had. All right. Okay. Update from Ted Alexander Welcome Center. All right. So. Next item in your packet, a proposed pledge contract with uh, Ted Alexander's family, Mark Alexander specifically, uh, for providing additional funds to complete uh, some of the work that we were not able to complete originally on the uh, Ted Alexander Welcome Center. So they are offering us an additional uh, $14,500 for the completion of the list. Uh, the agreement is based on our prior agreement uh, with the Alexander family. So it would be, the funds would be paid out in three payments based on uh, need and work completion. Um, I know it's just as uh, as details what we've already talked about doing that I've been updating the board on all along, uh, and uh, I got a signed copy from Mark Alexander this afternoon, so he's happy with it. I did tell him that I hadn't shared it with the board yet, but the board might want to make some changes, but he's happy with it in its current state. So I would move that we um, authorize Eric to to sign it. Um, Nat, you already shared this with who? Mark Alexander. That's convenient. I don't. I don't think the town should motion this forward. It includes five thousand um, dollars. That if our budget's approved is a guaranteed check, which isn't even holding this board or the previous board accountable for what it made for an agreement. Um, I don't know who the other citizens in town are that would contribute to the fundraising. Uh, and nor does it follow my motion, uh, which is what? You're cutting out. You're cutting out. Can you can you say that again, please? I said this. This doesn't follow my motion, uh, which was a motion that you wanted, and also does not keep the select board previous or current to their word. And you've already shared it with the customer. So if we strike the five thousand dollars, how do we look? Uh, 
this does exactly what we had previously talked about as the board we talked about we we uh, budgeted for five thousand uh, dollars sure which during that conversation uh, I had said that we shouldn't carry it and another board member had said that we probably shouldn't and another one said it was a good good idea to budget for it but but we shouldn't plan on using it. Well, why would we budget for it but not use it? The budget. If there was overages again, maybe we'd be covered. Okay. Um, I would suggest one change authorizing the vice chair to sign it as he's been taking the lead on it. Be your last one of your last official acts right here. Did second. we have a second? Or? No, we did not. I am looking for a second. Ah, uh, so I'm sorry, I did a second, obviously. Um, but I tend to agree with Evan on the five on the we put it in our budget, our budget hasn't yet passed. I feel like we shouldn't be. Signing anything about spending it on a budget that we haven't brought to both voters yet. The timing is inconvenient for you in particular, Matt, but I kind of feel the same way. Mr. Chairman, uh, it said also in the par paragraph it says that the voters do not approve the budget request. Citizens of the town of Johnson have committed to undertake fundraising. For the purpose of securing $5,000. That's fair. Yep. So that, that is in there. Uh, my major hard burden with, the, with this whole thing is that uh, it goes back to our promise that we made in the beginning uh, to, to wholly fund this without any taxpayer uh, contribution. Uh, unfortunately, we had COVID and uh, increases in building materials and it went way beyond what we expected that it was going to cost. And actually, uh, when you look at what is there, we did not get a whole lot for $45,000. And so this brings us to the phase two work to be completed. Uh, it was put in our budget, yes. Um, if this does come up to a vote, I mean, I, I probably will not vote no, because that's a little too strict, uh, but I might abstain because I did give a pledge uh, in the first place not to have any charges to the taxpayers. So, so I'm going to stick with that. And that'll be one of the last things I do on the board, but I think I had to be true to my word. So. Um, I'm going to second. I'm going to second based on what Mike just said, actually, about the fundraising. I think it's a good point. And the Alexander family has given this town a lot of money. Um, and I don't think 5000 is too much. Certainly the fundraise and probably the budget. Um, we have a motion. We have a second. So the echoing off your comment there. Um, They've given just shy of sixty thousand dollars for this project. Um, you know, a small commitment from the taxpayers because, quite honestly, what happened was the COVID um, and how much they've contributed and how important it is to them. The benefit is not to them; it's to the town. Uh, I think for a five thousand dollar contribution, we're getting a pretty good deal. If it costs us any further comments? Seeing none, I'll just automatically do a roll call. Evan, how do you vote? Nay. Uh, Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Abstain. Abstain. Matt, how do you vote? Aye. 
The chair holds in favor of motion passes. You got the signed copy? I've got that. Okay. More exciting. I want done all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is we had a request from one of the candidates this year to do a ride along with the highway. He has since uh, withdrawn his request, but we did ask Brian to look into it for some time. So when I spoke to our insurance company about uh, providing coverage for uh, an issue like that. It, we would not be covered uh, for insurance if any injury or anything happened during the ride along. Uh, the town would be open to a lawsuit. Uh, you know that anybody who is not an employee or a town official riding along, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty well open to a lawsuit. So the, the, our insurance company would recommend that we not allow uh, anybody else to ride in the trucks. And if, if we did allow it for one candidate or one citizen, we would be setting precedent. Yeah. Is there any further forward comments on that? This is not the Champlain Valley Fair. <laughs> Great comment. <laughs> okay. Unless there's any further comments, we we'll move on to. Uh, is there a is there a waiver that our insurance company could get us in case there was a need? For some reason, for a non-employee to be in one of those vehicles, we could ask for something like that. I, I didn't think to ask about that. I did ask about uh, city officials, about select board members. We, we have done that, uh, and while select board members would not be eligible to claim workers' comp if they were injured, uh, it would be. Sure. We, we would not be exposed in the same way as, as if it was a member of the public. Okay. Right. There could be other scenarios, though. Yes. Where a non select board member would need to ride in one of the trucks, possibly. Yeah. It'd be good to have a waiver. I, I can ask for some kind of insurance waiver and find out a little bit more about that. I didn't, I didn't inquire about that. That could be a special permission thing. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you see a news reporter riding with the same yep. AO2. So, I mean, it could be a circumstance where we allow. You know, it has been said, you know, that we're taxpayers in this town and we should possibly have a right, but we're all taxpayers in the whole big scheme of things. And we actually own a piece of the helicopters at the Army Aviation Flight Facility, but uh, I bet you 10 to 1, and you couldn't get through the gate. And number two, if you did and you asked for a ride, they'd probably tell you no. And so uh, I think the town ought to sleep well on the phone here. Yes. But yeah, inquiring if there is any kind of insurance waiver. So I guess it's been suggested for the rest of the board. Yeah. We have I don't think heard anything to find an Yeah. Okay. All right. This is any further comment. Uh, the ATV club. They. Uh, Sorry, I do have another comment. Brian, if it takes you more than five minutes, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I can just. <laughs> well, there could be scenarios where we would need somebody in those vehicles to get the services that we expect. That's not an employee. Uh, in the day of COVID. Um, I don't know. We're we're blessed to have a good road crew, but some are young and have kids, and some are old and have grandkids, and child care is difficult. I just I can't paint the exact scenario, but it could happen. Okay. If there's no further comments again on that, we we'll move on to the ATV club. Uh, the ATV club sent me a text. Wondering what was going on with the select board with the ATV issue. Uh, basically, the board has not taken action. And it is a board decision. The uh, little history there the ATV club 
went to the voters on town meeting a couple of days ago, a couple of years ago, asking for access to the village, and the voters approved it, although it was non-binding. Um, took about two years to get the state approval for Highway uh, Route 15. Last summer, uh, that did happen for a season trial. Uh, that has completed. We had a public meeting and asked for input from different citizens in the ATV club, and the board did hear that. And now it's really up to the board. We have a couple of options. Uh, we cannot not do anything, the, leave the ordinance as stands and not open up the village. We could opt to open the village, change our ordinance, and or some other changes to the ordinance. But really, it's in the board's hands right now. I'm not sure. Well, looking for input from the board where they'd like to go. And Ken, do you want to add any more? Yeah. Um, uh, not all this board, but that board also uh, going on, I think, four years ago. Uh, you amended the ordinance to allow us already on the class two road, um, Clay Hill, back to school hill. And then you amended the ordinance to let us down into the village because you said no village access at this time. Uh, so you amended the ordinance going on three and a half, four years now. Um, the trial went great. There was zero reports to the Mount County Sheriff about the village. I believe we all got that email. Eric had, had a couple of people contact him and he forwarded me the email where they actually saw the ATVs were slowing traffic down on the street. Good thing. Um, I chased down quite a few leads of problem people in the other areas. A couple of them in trouble. Eric chased down a few people before the trial period. I uh, spoke to them and kind of took care of things there. I think the board just really ought to consider allowing this and just and move ahead with it. You know, I mean, if it's not well received down the road, it's a simple process of filing a petition and getting it to be reversed. Uh, there's two years involved in trying to get the state permit. State permits passed. They've installed six ATV signs just in our little village area here, showing that it's shared highway. Basically, I think it went great. We didn't, you know, it was a slow year. We only had really a half a trial season because we didn't start till middle of July, was it, Eric? Something like that. You know, and it should have started on May 15th. But at the same time, I think it went rather well. I think you guys ought to vote it through and let it happen. And you guys got to amend the ordinance already because you've already allowed Clay Hill. Yeah, we never changed it. So, technically, according to the ordinance, we're not supposed to be on a class two paved highway or a road. Right. Remember the ordinance, right? Does not identify uh, open highways, just identifies that's correct. Highways that uh, classes of highways and can be authorized. Yeah, it says class four highways and any unpaved class three highway. Right. And then I asked you guys to amend it to allow us down Clay Hill, which I got unanimous support from, from the board. Every time I've come and asked, so I think it should just go forward. The people pretty much spoke that it's a good thing for the village. I'd like to ask you guys to motion and pass this through. We're going to change. Well, what we have is that we have give direction to Brian to uh, change some language in the ordinance, bring it before. Probably not this board, it'd be the next board. And then that board would be the one to vote on adopting the ordinance with the changes, either what Brian brings in or the new board may make other additional changes. And then we go through the process of 
the citizens have the right to bring up a petition or a special town meeting and vote. Mike? We can just make a simple addendum to the existing ATV policy to make the recent temporary changes permanent tonight. It's not a policy, it's an ordinance. Uh, did I say ordinance or policy? You said policy. I meant to say ordinance. Um, we talked sure. about this a couple of months ago, and we talked about having a extended trial because it wasn't a real trial. To me, that means we don't do anything, right? Is that you want to suggest before? We already talked about it. We, we didn't have a decision. This board is not. I'm pretty sure we did make a decision that we were going to just extend the trial out another year. What an amendment to the suggested by Kyle. No, I'm not talking about, the, I'm not talking about people out here talking. I'm talking about the board talking about it. And the board talked about extending it a year, that same meeting uh, this summer. All the board did, as I recollect it, was who listened. Provided any part. Okay. Well, as a member of the public, I would endorse that idea of extending the trial period. I think it was perhaps full trial, we didn't really experience full computer ridership, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, but we didn't get the full benefit of the trial, the purpose of the trial, then why not extend it and get that benefit? Agreed. More data is better. The data so far looks good. More is better. I'd just like to add that there was zero reports from Moe County Sheriff. Moe County Sheriff saw the trial went off from two of those objects. Um, well, just that's not true though. Uh, there were there were 20 something, 25, 26. 18 of them made by the same person who lived beside you on Sinclair Road. So that's, if you want to look at it, there's really four complaints all year long. That's true. I just want to make the record clear. I'm not arguing because we're 18 ready. of the complaints were on the Active ATV use road, which the sign that says ATV use is very outside of the driveway. Well, that's a paved road as well, so there should be no ATV. I mean, you have ATV right. signs <laughs> right outside your driveway on the speed limit sign, which is 35 feet from Route 100. Is that a paved road? It's a paved end into the road. It's a paved road. The <laughs> ATV sign, you guys authorized, or not you guys, but the board authorized it stall in 2006. It's been there since 2006. Has, there's, there's a sign that's been there. It's, it's on a page class. Uh, yeah, um, a couple of things. Um, one, Eric, in that November 1st meeting, you also said that there has to be a hearing if you want to change. An ordinance that you have to hold a hearing, a special hearing. Is you that, would when we change it. Yeah. If if you wanted to change it, so uh, there's a hearing process that would have to happen. That can happen tonight. No, we'd have to direct Brian to make some changes to the wording, and then we would have to approve the wording change. And right. So I just want part to... of a regular select board meeting. Okay. Okay. I was just reading the minutes, and you said it, a hearing. So. Okay. And the other thing is that um, looking back at those November 1st minutes, um, yeah, I would, uh, I was reviewing them and um, Shannon um, Friedrich, I believe was the one that was here representing mostly. And he, you know, he admitted several times in that meeting that it was, it was a quiet summer, that this was not True indication of what ATVs in, in the village of Johnson that's look not, like. That's not what was okay. okay. Well, that's what's written here. He said the former this, the former president of the uh, Lima and ATV Club said he believes the town was pretty quiet during the summer. He doesn't foresee an extensive amount of ATVs running through the town. He thinks having ATVs in the village will be good to the town. There'll be more opportunity for people to interact with the town and new stores and restaurants and minimal impact. He then goes on to say that the club did not promote the ability to go into the village heavily, knowing this was a trial year. They didn't want to pound the town during the first season and encourage everyone to come. 
They didn't want people to have concerns over too many ATVs in the village. There will be more in the future. He then says it's been an average year and an average number of people. He doesn't see the point of having a longer trial period. He thinks it was a very average year. Um, and then another member of the community said, Dara Westcomb said that he doesn't think Johnson will ever see an influx of ATVs because it's a dead end. Newport sees a lot of business because it's, it's part of a loop. The only businesses that will ever see ATV riders buying things will be those that sell gas and food. He doesn't think anyone on an ATV will buy art supplies, which was directed at me. That's not the purpose for the day. Um, so there was, a, yeah, out of the mouths of ATV riders, you know, they state that this was not, it was not a true year. So I'm going to, to the the board. Board. Yeah, I'm going to bring it back and forth because we've all made up the public hearing on it. We, this board heard from the public. The decision is really before this board. How do you want to move forward? So, Mr. Chairman, my my kind of bail uh, motion is that order. Move to make an addendum to the existing ATV ordinance to make the recent yeah. temporary changes permanent. I has to have an order for this meeting. I would rule it yes. I don't think we do an addendum. I, I I I tend to agree. I don't know what that gets into a very fine point, but especially until the contentious, I would recommend that we don't approve on rich language that we have the ordinance in front of us to make it approval. Also, this is listed as a discussion in the commission or not an action in it. Yes. I feel like my influence here is waning. Uh, <laughs> any position I have, if any vote they make is uh, very good waning, going to be uh, overruled uh, by someone else. I'm not sure what uh, I'm not sure what I can do, but I'll move the conversation forward at this point. Well, there's not a whole lot of end of it, it's just discussions. But we could provide direction if, if the board's well that's has a direction, but I'm not sensing it. I guess that's I, I would. Are we just providing Brian direction? Yeah. I I would second that direction. I guess. It's not what direction? <laughs> we'll amend the ordinance permanently. So if if you want to see the amendment, I can draft the language to bring the current ATV ordinance with the. Uh, Current uh, with, with the temporary changes that we bring up for a future meeting for your vote, if that's what you want. I would like to see that before I'm off the board. Our next regularly scheduled meeting. I don't understand why this stuff is so urgent and permanent. That is that boggles my mind. If it's a non issue and so many people are open to extending it another year, why do we? I don't understand how that hurts anybody. Well, mostly just the time. How does it hurt? Because any ordinance change we make, we go through the process of getting to an ordinance where we feel comfortable comfortable with it and we hope to adopt it. Then it doesn't do an effect for what's it, 60 days or something like that. I think it's, yeah, I think it's 60 days, I think 45 days for the petition. So many days for the But then the season is over in the fall. Right? And there's plenty of time. All through fall and winter. That's where we were last year. And you know, there's just not time in the fall to deal with an ordinance that we were doing budget. Well, I think there there could like we raised this in November, but after our discussion in November, uh, I don't recall there being a specific direction of whether it was going to be we studied for another year or we wanted to prepare the ordinance for a vote. Um, 
I don't think that we had a specific direction of what we were going to do next. We did. Uh, well, I brought it up this last April, actually, at the first meeting with this board, and nobody wanted to do anything at that time. So, well, let's actually form the citizens group to get people together to propose some changes that nobody wanted to do. But now there's this pressure to do something immediately after deciding very deliberately not to do it. So. Well, our next was probably a big mistake. Why? What is the purpose? I don't understand. So. No. Yeah, the second one was to, to get it going. We should be able to do something better earlier. I think so last spring we were in a different place because uh, we were still waiting for the state to be sort of 15. So there wasn't anything for us to do until we had gone through a season. And but yeah, but it that's fun. I mean, I, I just like to say that, you know, he's hefty bats in life. What's the hurry? There's no hurry bats found in four years. Well, I'm just yeah, saying, you know, right now, and, right? and then you said put it off till next fall. Well, then you're going to do the exact same thing you did this year and not talk about well, it I don't know, that's like, until it goes on. Later. Um, it was supposed yeah. to have been at the town meeting, so I would have thought it would have went out for warning to be on about. That would have been the simplest solution for every one of you. That actually allowed the trial, who allowed the amendment to the ordinance before. Matt, you did also. Um, yeah, I'm just saying you've allowed, and you, and you, you have amended the ordinance. You ought to just amend the ordinance and let's just move on. And if there's a problem with it, you go about it just like everything else. Somebody can file a petition, get the signatures, and have this dealt with the way all ordinances are. They can't. Somebody can file a petition to stop this once you start doing it. They, they cannot, the voters cannot tell the select board to write the ordinance. So no, no, I said to stop it. Well, to stop it, yeah. You have a time limit, but there were 30 or 50, 45 days, something like that. After we adopt an ordinance, if the citizens can raise a petition, and then it requires a special town meeting, and the voters decide up or down on that ordinance. Okay, so. Again, you, you know, amended the ordinance three years ago, and we haven't had an up and down vote on it in that time period. That's what that's. I think I mean, the, the changes we made were just opening in uh, some highway access. Maybe we were stretching the uh, limits of what our ordinance had allowed us, so we were at least within it on classes of highway. This is a Whole different piece where we're opening up access to a village that goes on a state class one highway. It's a whole different place than where we were. Correct, but that, that permit's been approved, passed, signed, sealed, and your state one and signs put up. So, really, we're here asking you to open up railroad street. But that's really the new road that you're going to be adding to it because everything else on the other side of that bridge is open besides River Road and I believe. What's your road? Well, Creamery. Creamery road. To give that to provide <coughs> access to the village is going to require opening two class two highways paid, Boom Hill and Railroads. You already have the area. You, you let us we down. allowed it for this summer. No, you allowed that two and a half years ago to get to Jolly's. When we first accessed not Jolly's to Subway. When we first accessed School right. Hill to get over through to Jolly, we also asked to get down into the village to Subway and we were granted permission that. Only to the class four highway driveway. Which is a paved road that you're talking about. So it's, I'm mm -hmm. just saying, you know what I mean? You got this board and the past board has already done this. Well, I'm, I'm going to cut you down, cut you no. off, and this board is going to make a trip on how it goes. Or not. It's totally in the board's hands. You've had the evaluation year. He doesn't need a couple of feet foot. The board on. You can probably get to it just one more. Sorry, if I may. Well, I think that makes a very good point. If there's any question whether we had an evaluation year and it was a true evaluation year, then extending it for another year makes perfect sense. Providers still have access. 
and everybody gets the benefit of the additional experience. It's, it's like an obvious thing for everybody. And I, I hate to pump it, but uh, as in a month that we have new board sitting here. Uh, to them. And it will. I mean, either way, I'll be on board for boards, and I feel pretty strongly that there's no harm in continuing the trial for another year. Anyone makes an argument otherwise, you don't know my position. I'll just tell everybody here you don't know my position on ACPs in the village. I don't know my position on ACPs in the village. So I don't really like being told how I'm going to act a year from now, first of all. And secondly, um, I don't see the harm in extending the trial for a year to get better experience for the full AP season. What does it hurt? What does it hurt? Um, so that's my position. Tonight, and everyone else can have their own opinion. This board tonight, the full outcome, and you know the summer's um, trial. We, we can't hold the next board. Today. That's true. And so a month from now, the new boards would decide. The reverse itself and the chairs. Other union having the majority of the division. I'm sure. You do what now? It would be majority of all three of the chairs. So is that the sentence of the board right now is to. No. I'd like to see the wording next meeting. But the temporary changes to be added to the as an amendment to the existing ATP order for the city of Los Angeles. Okay, we got two suggestions. One is to have another season trial. Another suggestion is to open up the ordinance and put the word in there. Any other thoughts? Right, just my word. So this was going as a discussion item, so you can't actually take any action tonight anyway. Yeah, that's right. Right. Okay. Let me say, do we need the discussion item? Do we need to provide direction to Brian? Yeah, I, I would I think the board's interpretation is asking me to prepare a document for them. Isn't a specific yeah. action. Evan? Like to see discussion and action in our next meeting on amendments to the ordinance, kind of like Mike said. Proposed um, language. Huh? Proposed language change. Yeah. I mean, we're we're getting down to planning, and right at the beginning of this meeting, we talked about. You know, planning for the beautification committee to write grants because they need to do it by the end of fiscal year. Well, these ATV guys need something before the end of our fiscal year, and we're kind of just kicking them to the side, like it's been done for four years. I think we should act. And I openly said I would support the will of the voters, and you did too, Beth. And this vote overwhelmingly passed last year. Well. I, we can talk about that separately, Evan. I disagree with you. Uh, I agree with you that it has to not change the ordinance, but that's not the same thing as changing the ordinance. So we should be clear about what passed. Yeah, very specifically what passed was not to change the ordinance. Right. Overwhelmingly. Well, I think, it's yeah, like, maybe, maybe we should talk separately because we were all at the meetings on how the previous select board and angled all the wording for that and gave it as a layup. Uh, the ATV committee really didn't have much to do with that one. Okay. But the wording was specifically not to change the ordinance. So, for what it's worth, I know it was like, no, not to change the ordinance. You'd like to know my vote on that one? Yeah, just say that. Fair enough. Are we in somewhat of a consensus? I'm not sure now. <laughs> we are not. I can't anticipate it. I feel like. Yeah. 
any changes that we set in motion tonight are going to be changed by whoever's sitting here in a month. Uh, so I, I really feel like my my was still there um, to that point. There. And, uh, yeah, that, that would be my uh, position to, to not uh, just to not try to do it. Well, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I love this week. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and, I, and for me, I think it comes down to because anything this board does is undone by the next board that we need to wait until now. What difference is that? You just can't wait for somebody else to do something. We need to act like it's not going to be an next board next month. That's our job. Really? We are this board right now. That misses the point, though. That, uh, that is a missing point. Well, if you, if you keep it open up and, and understand that anything we set in motion tonight, we could have Brian do a whole ton of work in a particular direction just to have the next board say yes don't do any of that because we don't want you to do it um it's 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 a simple change an addendum to the by making those temporary things permanent and just adding it and you could have a vote next meeting to bring out that you could not get it that far along where it could not be undone. Well, don't tell me it's really be undone. Um, the last vote wasn't just about not changing, it was about getting rid of in the class four use a comprehensive study. So, I mean, yeah, that has nothing to do with this, but it's a making me question. But if we need to do a trial period again, let's do it. I mean, it's not going to change nothing. They're going to go to Maple Fields, they're going to hit the food trucks at the court. They might hit the beach place if it's open. That's all it's ever going to get hit in this town until something comes back. And we can't get anything to come back here unless we can bring other stuff to it. All I hear about in a lot of the meetings is about all how the place place clips from the rail trails bringing money here. Let's bring some other money here. We can help with a lot of stuff. Bumps, put, I'm, I'm just going to draw a quick number about $35,000 in the two plus four rows last year. Okay, I'm going to cut you off again. Uh, this board tonight could decide that we're going to do another season trial period. What I'm getting at is a month from today, there's going to be two more, two different people here, and they could undo that. And, and so I think it's best that we just wait until March and then uh, the new board can bring it up. Hey, so, Eric. Yes. Evan, go. So this, this board tonight can give them another trial period, which the trail master has said he would accept, and Beth says she's comfortable with, right? Yeah. If, if that's what this board can do that doesn't bind the next board and makes everybody that's there feel more comfortable i would support that um you know because it it gets these guys set up where they can get it on their maps or whatever they do um ahead of time and nobody could say that this was not a second trial year that went successfully does that make sense yeah i hear what you're saying um and this board could tonight, through consensus, agree that another season. Um, and my just my point is that the next board could undo anything we do tonight. Well, it's the only thing we can do is. Do you need a motion, or I would? I no, would I be. It's yeah, it's a discussion item, but. Um, because we didn't know what the direction was going to be. My understanding, because it's a discussion, I we couldn't act on it tonight. We could act on it for two weeks if it was. It must just simply extend 
the uh, trial period. So, yeah, it's here. So, I guess with the board's consent, we'll have it as an actionable item in two weeks. And the intent would be to extend the trial period. If that's what I'm hearing, is agreed. It's sounding like that's all we can do. No, we can do these okay. things. Is anything else for her? Okay, President's Day? Yes. Uh, our next select board meeting falls on President's Day. Uh, that week, we're also having our information meeting, and it's a pretty full week. Uh, you know, I'm reluctant to volunteer for a holiday. But I think that might be our best opportunity to just go ahead and pull the. We got information meeting Tuesday and Saturday. The trustees are meeting Friday and Monday is our regular schedule. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to have the candidates night on the 16th. What day is that? That's uh, Wednesday, the 16th, the week before. So we got Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's not a great start. There's no good way around it. I think that we're that we should plan on just meeting on the holiday. We don't close the office for spring. Yes. Oh, we do. Right? Yeah. 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 Can you just flash our meeting on the 23rd? We can. I don't believe that we do. I don't think there's anything at the informational meeting. I don't think there's anything we can do to modify what has happened. The informational meeting is to just discuss ballot items and on the town meeting. But the 23rd is the candidates. The 16th is the candidate. Oh, the 16th is the candidate. Okay. Like five times, I think so. Uh, uh, I've not seen it anywhere. So 16th, but we have a second night, second candidates for. No. No. One, can, one oh, fourth of the candidates on the 16th. Two informational meetings on Tuesday and Saturday. No matter what we do, we're going to have a lot of meetings at last week. Uh, right. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm happy to meet on the 23rd. Uh, you know, or the or the 16th, or next week, or the the 21st. Okay. Or closing. About 23rd. Give Ryan an actual holiday and rest in an actual holiday. I was given an actual ticket. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, now maybe we can. Okay, now we got no choice. I, I guess probably no. for a formal motion to change our meeting date. Evan, does that work for you? I'll be home the whole second half of February, so sure. Okay, so I move to hold our. The uh, select board meeting uh, the 23rd instead of the 21st. Okay. Uh, motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We are saying it. business. Oh. Awesome. Okay. What do you leave it, Diane?